Energy is everything and salty sea air and sand in the hair is a very effective way to increase your energy and recharge the batteries. This is Zestology, I'm Tony White and I'm back in London now uh, walking around the street, well, walking down to the river actually near my home in London. But uh, last week we were lucky enough to spend a week in Cornwall, a break in Cornwall, and are suitably re-energised. And you'll be pleased to hear, despite the kind of normal healthy levels of um, supplements and health and food and everything else on this podcast, there were hearty portions of ice cream, chips and the odd rum and coke on holiday. And they went down extremely well as well. I hope you get the chance to do something similar this summer because it is incredible how it does recharge the batteries. You know, letting go and doing less and just chilling out is almost better than all the supplements and the saunas and the infrared lights and everything else that we talk about on this podcast. Well, this podcast is, of course, all about energy. So let's go with this week's non-holiday related interview. And it is CEO... Uh, Mark Scott who is today's guest on Zestology and he literally ate like a dog for one month. The results of this are going to surprise you. He runs a healthy pet food company called Bella and Duke and it's basically biohacking for your pets. It's a very cool idea. It's gone down extraordinarily well. Um, He's now serving over 200,000 dog meals a week and he's recently had plenty of press attention because he came up with this great idea. He wanted to see what would happen when he ate human processed food for one month, so that was the first month, and then test to see what happened when he switched back to a healthy diet that he feeds his dogs at Bella and Duke. (laughs) So he literally ate like a dog for a month. Human processed food versus healthy dog food, as I say, the results are gonna surprise you. Um, If you're interested and you wanna get involved, Uh, with Bella and Duke then you can use the code PCZEST50 and go to Bella and Duke use the code PCZEST50 and you'll get 50% off their first box so um, I hope I hope some people listening to this with pets might get involved with that Um, yeah so we talked about that and we also talked biohacking diet pets and what you can do straight away to clean things up a bit diet wise here he is Mark Scott on Zestology biohacking you're kind of in this bubble that you assume that everybody knows everything about nutrition and you're always surprised that you have never heard of bulletproof coffee <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Um, so i wanted to get the message out to people who wouldn't normally be aware of these things so i wanted to take everything i've learned from biohacking and put it into the dog world that's basically what i wanted to do so everyone even if you look at the terminology people call themselves pet parents so the fact that they call themselves a parent is they, they put their dog as a child in their in their mind, which is great. And, and I think in most households today, it's it's uh, who have got a dog, it's dog, mother, kids, father, or sometimes it's furniture then father. That's the hierarchy <laughs> 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 yeah. in, in a modern family. So I thought, well, the only way I can get the message through to people is by humanizing dogs. So what I decided to do is I've never understood why in the in the, the cat and dog world the medical profession insists that processed food is better than natural food i just don't get it because mm. if you went to your doctor tony and you said and he and he asked you what do you eat with they never do they never ask you what you put in your mouth and you said oh, i eat fresh food i eat you know meat fish vegetables and your doctor turned around to you and said no no you shouldn't be doing that you should be eating processed food which is balanced, you'd get rid of your dog so you wouldn't go back. Yeah. But that, that's exactly what happens with vets. They recommend highly processed food over fresh food. So I thought, well, the only way I can explain this to, to, to the most people who have a pet is to show what happens to you as a human, what is happening to your dog. So I decided to create um, a human version of the food that we recommend to dogs. And to do that, I had to eat processed food. So I ate lots of processed food, breads, pastas, uh, ready meals from the supermarket. And I was eating things like, you know, athletic greens and all this. So I made sure I hit the RDA. Uh, so I hit all the minimal yeah. vitamins and, and micronutrients. Yeah. 
just like what's in dog food. Because my point of being was these foods are recommended by the medical profession because they meet what they call the FEDIAF criteria, which is basically all these things have to have the right minerals and vitamins and all these kind of things in them. So in in effect, they don't look at the ingredients that goes in with these minerals, mm. which is a big issue because in effect, and I, I jokingly put there, you know, that I could get a bag of sand and I could get a mix of FEDIA and minerals and stuff and mix it together. In effect, it could pass the FEDIA approval because it's got the minerals and the vitamins and everything. So they don't look at the actual ingredients that's going in with those minerals. Right. Yeah. So I wanted to prove the same. And, and what happened was, is when I did it to myself, you can see from the photographs in the weekend, I put two stone on in two months. Did you? So you were eating, so you were hitting kind of minimum nutritional standards, but that's all you were hitting. Yes. Yeah, exactly. It had, I, I didn't take into any account of the fact it might have been in a massive pork pie yeah. or, or a lasagna or, or yeah. whatever. So that was how I could prove that what happens to the body. And then I measured it through the aura ring and, and a whole heap of other, yeah. just to show you what's happened to my body. Yeah, I saw on the blog you wrote, you had kind of various aura graphics and uh, I mean, it's great. It's really fascinating. So it was just a show because it's difficult to get the ring on my dog. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, I just wanted to show what was happening internally and externally because often you get the, the people saying, um, oh, my, I feed my dog dry dog food and they look good. Well, I, I know lots of people who smoke who also look good until they don't. And that's the problem with all these things is, is unless you see uh, you know, things that are happening and, and even when they do see things happening, they never connect the dots together like itchy skin. We get it on ourselves. And I, and I showed that in, the, in my blog post that I started to get dry skin on my body, which I've not had for years when I started eating the processed food. Mm. And it's exactly one of the biggest things that dogs get is itchy skin. They are, over 50% of dogs in the UK are obese. 50%. Right. So it's, it's, when you look at all this, um, the experiment just showed basically what happened after two months. And then within one month, I tried to do what I call a species appropriate diet, which is what we do for dogs. So we, we so, sorry, to... sorry, you, you, for the first month, you ate crap, basically. For the and first two months, I ate for crap. For the first two months, and then you changed. I changed, and yeah. I went onto my species appropriate diet. Right, yeah, yeah. For humans, as I would for what we create for dogs and, and, and cats. Yeah. Uh, and then you have that switch, and I'm sure you, you have done the keto and all that, and you go through that <gasps> stage. Yeah, of, you know, I have sugars. actually, yeah, yeah. And that whole of uh, feeling terrible and the toxins are coming out, the fats and all this stuff that you, you feel. And for the first two weeks, you absolutely feel worse than worse. But by the third and the fourth week, you start adapting to the, the, the keto diet. Now, I wasn't necessarily going into keto diet for keto's sake. I was just thinking, if I was going to eat like I am in the UK right now, because my, if I look at my, my geo, uh, my, 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 my ancestry is Northern European. So I try to eat like a Northern European. So, for example, there's no sugars really in, in the wild right now. You don't get the sugars until the end of the summer. Right, yeah. Where you get the fruits and stuff like oh, that. Don't, that. don't say I'm not allowed to eat ice cream anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you can't, aren't I? I'm, I'm no judge. judge. <laughs> I, and by the way, I'm not perfect. Yeah. Um, but then the, uh, the the sugars indicate to the body that, hey, you're at the end of summer, winter's coming, it's time to put some fat on, let's start burning the sugars and store the fat. Uh, and the problem when you're eating carbohydrates, and, and, and especially in kibble, because that's how they make the kibble is using a lot of carbohydrates, is it saying to the body, hey, you're at the end of the summer, let's store fat, let's store fat, let's store fat, let's store fat, rather than eating seasonally. Yeah. So when I, uh, when I cut out the sugars and I, and I ate a high-fat diet, suddenly my weight came off and I lost a stone and a half. Actually, I've lost more than that in just over four weeks. Yeah, just wow. Just by doing that. And it wasn't like I was doing any, I, anything. I was doing less exercise because in the first two weeks I was just, I was knackered, man. Was so just... when you say you were eating like a dog, you were. It was. It was a species appropriate diet. It was the equivalent of what you'd give the dog. Yes. Yeah. I, I, so, I, yeah. So what I did is I ate. I ate the processed version of what a dog eats. Yeah. And then I ate what we create as a, a, a species appropriate, i.e., raw, 
with uh, all because when we're doing um, dog food, if you look at our ingredients on the side of our box, all you see it's 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 chicken. You yeah. know what chicken is? It's it's yeah. liver, it's kidneys, it's heart. Yeah, all the things that you would get if you ate an animal. Yeah, yeah. Because that's what dogs would do. They would eat from top to tail. Yeah, the whole thing. So that's what we mimicked in the um, for the dogs, and I tried to mimic that as much as I could on my diet, appropriate for a human being, to show you what the difference was. Yeah. You were you eating raw food or cooked food yourself? No, so I was I was eating I was eating cooked meats, uh, but I was eating it from my garden. So I was eating salads, uh, you know, curly kale, whatever was growing in my in my garden at the time is what I was eating, and, and that, that I would eat as much as I could raw. Uh, but definitely, uh, obviously, meat and, and fish I was eating cooked. Yeah, yeah. It's really interesting, isn't it? You know, the story about those poor dogs getting cancer. That is the kind of thing that w- will actually not surprise many people in, in the world of biohacking or the world of people that listen to this podcast. But it will surprise a lot of people. Um, do you find, do you encounter a lot of resistance to the kind of ideas and theories behind your business? I do. And that's part of the challenge um, is, I mean, to give, you the, to give you an idea, we literally this Monday coming will be our third year as a business. Uh, and we've grown extraordinarily fast. I mean, it's ridiculous. I'm so grateful for the speed we're growing at. Um, but we still have that challenge. We're not mainstream, even though that we're doubling in size every year. And I'd say 60 percent of our customers coming to us are coming from the processed food world. So uh, I think the biggest game changer for us is the amount of people who are going on to places like Facebook and all the other places. And they may be part of the French Frenchy group or the part of the Labrador group. And they start talking about a difference they've seen in their dog from moving from processed food onto a raw, raw diet. Yeah, that that has been the biggest game changer because all the vets and all the medical can throw as yeah. much science against us as much as they want. The proof's in the pudding. You take a dog, you stick them on raw, on a, a proper, complete raw diet, and within four weeks, you will see a difference. And it's amazing. Wow. I mean, even down to the stools. I mean, I like to talk about poop quite often, or as a jobby, as we call it in Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the thing about poop, and if you've got a dog, you know, you, you have to pick these things up every single day. They are just so different on a raw fed dog. They're not huge. What What's interesting is, when you feed a dog processed food, because it's so full of fillers, it just goes through the body. Where you feed them on raw, and literally, I think probably about a quarter comes out because the body's absorbing ingredients. Yeah, and that wow. that that is an obvious thing that you will see. With and, and it's the same for humans, isn't it? Like if you've had a bad diet for a weekend, you know. You can tell. Yeah. <laughs> you can really tell. But That's really not... interesting. I've never quite thought of it, like, of, a, of a jobby like that, to be honest. Um, yeah. 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 Well, it is. I mean, it's it's the biggest tell. And it's it's because if that's what's happening on the way out, you can imagine what's happening on the body on the inside. Um, and it's just it's just mind-blowing, it's just the difference in that. I mean, if you look in the natural world, it, uh, animal stools in the wild, they're not smelly. They're not stinky. Yeah. You know, they're not. They're very tight. They're very packed you know and um i bet you never thought you'd be talking about jobbies on a on a monday i, I didn't i didn't so let's go to so um, i've obviously read the um the press release on your site ceo mark scott ate like a dog and it's it's a fascinating press release and you know you talk you you show some aura ring stats and some various things going on and your peloton stats as well um and when you were eating the kind of poor dog food diet um you you really didn't feel very good i mean you must have been tempted to give it up quite quickly because it's a bit kind of more is it morgan spurlock the guy who ate mcdonald's uh yeah i'm not sure how long he did it he did six months didn't he or was it a month full on was yeah it a month he did I, I can't remember yeah i remember watching I it it was pretty yeah pretty shocking yeah it was tough but um i was committed i mean the toughest part to be honest with you Tony, was coming off it was it it's when you realize how much sugar just controls your life and wow. the ups and downs. And that wow. was the, the toughest bit was, and I'm not perfect. So don't, don't, I'm not like, no. you know, got a six pack and, and, and 7% oh, fat. You look oh. like an absolute vision of a man. Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> like we're on radio, aren't we? Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so no, it was, it was much more just, just coming off. It was difficult. I mean, to, to give me my background, I used to actually be 17 and a half stone. So I've certainly not been a, 
um, a slim guy that I am today. I, I used to smoke and, you know, I just yeah. go back to those. And I remember just, I couldn't remember things. My recall and everything was really? terrible. Yeah. I just, I couldn't concentrate on things and, and my mind would wander. I'd get stressed by things. And you realize just how much food plays a part. And that was, that really hit me as well is if I am feeling this as a, a sort of adult, then what are kids feeling? What are dogs feeling? How is it, how are these things affecting dogs uh, in the house when they're left by, by themselves and they're eating high carb? It's, it's just the sugars in that, that are food. And they name the sugars lots of different things. I think there's 65 different names for sugar. So don't be fooled by the fact it just doesn't say sugar on the side of the, uh, the, the label, you know? Yeah. There's so many different names that they can call these things. But if it was having an effect to me like that, one of the things that's come out recently is how many dog behaviorists now recognize that raw fed dogs are just easier to, to work with. Right. That's, that's mad, isn't it? I mean, in terms of like behavior and uh, overall health and how your mind is working as well. And obviously um, you and I have kind of met because I, I originally met your wife a few years ago, Sadie at the yeah. Bulletproof conference. And um, when I was looking at the, the blog that you sent me, there's a couple of pictures of you and her. And I must say, you look very, very different in the pictures to how you do now. Yeah, I look like a roadie back then, definitely. Um, <laughs> Sadie was the pregnant one, by the way, not me in that one. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you're right. I mean, Sadie has been a massive influence and she's a, a bulletproof coach and, uh, yeah. and, and all the rest of it. So that's really helped steer me. So, um, and that's one of the keys, I think, with with what I do is I'm no expert and you wouldn't want me operating on your vet, on your, on your pet. Uh, but I am, I will go off and find the right people to find the right answers. Yeah. And that, that is what, and it's the same with when you, you listen to podcasts like yours and, and all these other podcasts out there, you just get so much information and even down to, I mean, when you think about the, the acid level in your stomach, I mean, that's like one of the biggest things to stop bugs getting into your body, isn't it? Pathogens. Yeah. Yeah, you start eating things, carbohydrates, and all these foods. They start to reduce your your um your your pH level. So then, where's your defense? Especially a dog that's, you know, people are worried about raw feeding because of salmonella and all the other pathogens in food. Which one, if you're getting it from a reputable brand, they'll use human grade food. But your dog's going out there picking things up outside. It's sniffing each other's butts. It's doing all, yeah. <laughs> and you're worried <laughs> about food. <laughs> yeah it hasn't got hands so if you're not helping your dog's immune system by feeding it the right things and the acid level and all this it's just it's just it's all connected and again coming back to you know i wonder how much we've been in lockdown and in scotland by the way you're now actually allowed to go into the cafes today as long as it's outside so i'm well excited oh good yeah <laughs> but how many people have been eating lots of high sugar products and then finding out that you know, mentally they're struggling as well. You know, it's just it's just all connected. Yeah, yeah. I I have become more finely attuned to that over the years, and obviously, you know, going to the bulletproof conference and and obviously doing lots of reading and podcasting and everything else, kind of becoming a bit more attuned to it. It is fascinating how it affects your mind. I mean, certainly this podcast is about energy and certainly you know like fatigue levels as well. And I know your energy kind of went up a lot when you when you did this and initially with lockdown I think I kind of we ate particularly well and we had loads more time for cooking and it's all slightly soured recently as the reality <laughs> of kind of you know spending a prolonged period of time in kind of enforced house arrest kicks in um and probably I've been eating a little bit too much sugar and maybe I do need to calm that down a little bit so my work schedule has been rather hectic lately and I'm noticing it can start to wear me down a bit even when you doing all the right stuff and you're doing the workouts and you're meditating and everything else you sometimes notice that your stress levels get a bit high nobody likes feeling stressed out and even worse it can it can affect the way that you kind of do your work even the people around you if you're not kind of keeping on top of it um, and I find that one of the things that does help with that is sorting out my magnesium levels super dosing with magnesium uh, this nutrient is responsible for 300 to 600 different biochemical reactions in the body, including the metabolism. And when your magnesium levels are low, you struggle with sleep, energy, metabolism, pain, and stress. You can get magnesium from food, and, and by and large, I'm, I'm a big fan of getting 
of magnesium in all our minerals from food. But the problem is, the way that our food is these days, there's not enough magnesium in there. So before you go and research magnesium supplements, know this, not all magnesium supplements are full spectrum, meaning they don't all have seven forms of magnesium that you need. Luckily, one does, and that is magnesium breakthrough. As I walk past a building site, as I stroll around London recording this podcast, um, let me tell you about Magnesium Breakthrough. It's a complete formula that includes naturally derived forms of all seven forms of supplemental magnesium. doesn't contain any synthetic additives or preservatives. It's pure as anything. It, it definitely works. I take it every day. Every day? Well, almost every day. I mean, you know, Sometimes you forget, but yeah, I'd say six days out of seven I take it and I definitely feel better on it. I'm tracking it at the moment to see how I feel and whether it affects my sleep as well and how it affects my sleep. But I definitely think this is my number one magnesium supplement, possibly my all-time favourite magnesium supplement. It's so pure. It's got all the seven types of magnesium as well. And you can get 10% off with a special Zestology coupon code when you visit bioptimizers.co.uk. Use the code ZESTOLOGY10 to get 10% off. If you're anywhere else in the world apart from the UK, just head to bioptimizers.com, use the same code, you'll get 10% off. And uh, yeah, let me know how you feel. I recommend using it for 30 days. See how it affects your stress and your mood and your relaxation levels. Use the code ZESTOLOGY10 for 10% off. That's it, back to the show. I mean, I'm just fascinated by the business that you run. It sounds it sounds like a kind of really interesting niche as well, which is probably like a great niche for you guys. You probably need to watch out because you probably get so successful that other people are going to try and copy you, won't you? Yeah. Well, actually, we uh, we always see it, but I think I think people don't get it unless you you really understand holistically biohacking and because a lot of people sell dog food they don't sell pet wellness yeah and there's a lot of things and i could go into vaccinations and chemicals like worming tablets and and, and all these other things that we avoid as much as we possibly can again if your body's properly nutrition got the correct nutrition it'll do most of these things like it has thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of years but we keep interfering we, we, we keep trying to think lab coats do better than nature's you know mother yeah. nature and yeah. it's just you realize that if your body's got the correct working pillar of nutrition then everything else just it just works correct and it's not it's not a complicated thing it's when we start to mess with it so often for example people say oh my vets uh, recommended i get my, my, my dog wormed well why would you worm your dog if your dog hasn't got worms <laughs> yeah but it, yeah. They, they don't you, you don't do that you go well get your dog tested for worms if it hasn't got worms don't stick chemicals in their body Ticks and fleas, you know, a lot of people put these things on the back of their neck, dog's necks. Again, it's, it's chemicals. What is it doing to dogs? So all these things play an impact. So, yes, I think there will be uh, a lot of Me Too businesses trying to copy us, but they don't understand it. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think that's the key is we've got a, a, a range of different um, specialities within our business and people who really know their stuff. And that's what I think sets us apart, even now to – for example, do herring oil over, over salmon oil. And the reason is, is because of how farm salmon is, is fed and all these things. And, yeah. um, you know, you just, as you get further and further into it, you realize actually we can improve your product here. You can improve your product there. Um, so the, all these things we're, we're bringing out uh, and developing over time, even down to bone broth, we have bone broth with dogs. Oh, great. Great. Yeah. And how, uh, it's on the um, processed food, I mean, one of the things that you mentioned on the on the blog is you, well, you said you felt hungry all the time. You'd have sugar rushes and then you'd feel tired. You'd want a snack whenever you could. And you also noticed that your hay fever got worse. You know, this is something I've been talking on the podcast about quite a bit recently in terms of histamine intolerance and hay fever and allergy symptoms. It's very much related to the diet that you eat. And you can really, people who suffer from hay fever can make quite a change with their diet. And, you know, this is the best year that I've ever had for hay fever, I think, having delved into it more than ever. It's amazing the difference you make. So you felt worse for a couple of months. Obviously, it was in the middle of hay fever season while you were doing this. But then when you switched to a much more wholesome diet, you felt better in terms of the allergies, did you? Yeah. I mean, I could wake up in the morning and I can breathe through my nose. Yeah. Which really helps with meditation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, absolutely. Like, it's like your cup's full. And then if you're putting... Uh, you know, food that's 
affecting your histamine levels as well. You're just overflowing and overflowing. So 100% diet is, a, I reckon, one of the biggest factors that's helped me get through the, the hay fever. Yeah. And again, that, 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 and I think that shows on my skin as well, the fact that my skin improved the minute I came off that diet again. It's just, it's all related. It's just, you're having a histamine effect. You, 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 you know, they're, they're, I, can't, I can't pronounce the name of this, the dogs, but the dog breeds, you know, like the French, the Frenchies, you know, they've got the short yeah. faces, the bulldogs. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They have lots of breathing problems, as it is. If you're going to feed them inflammatory foods, yes. it's, it's just going to cause mucus in the nose like it does with hay fever because that's your natural reaction mm -hmm. so you can then see these dogs are already breathing have a difficulty breathing and then you're putting inflammatory foods into there of course it's not going to help them with their breathing uh, yeah. so yeah it makes total sense what you say well look it's it's um it's very daring of you to do that and to eat a food that you wouldn't necessarily choose to eat normally for a couple of months there are some very fetching photographs of you on that blog and i highly <laughs> recommend everyone goes and has a look at it because um because it really does show the difference between two different types of diet, and, and obviously it would with with people's dogs as well. You're obviously quite into this world. What else are you? I mean, what's the typical day look like for you? You mentioned meditation. You've got the aura ring. You got the Peloton bike. What else is going on? Uh, I did a thing uh, I, a few years ago. I went over to the Mine Valley. I don't know if you know Mine Valley. I've heard of it. Yeah. So I, I went over with Vijan. Um, yeah. And we we went for five weeks, and I took the kids out there, and that was absolutely amazing. Wow. Mine Valley University in Tallinn. Yeah. Uh, and the kids got taught how to, um, you know, set up a business, how to do vlogging, how to uh, communicate, reading emotions. You know, it was amazing for the kids. Yeah. Um, and then how, how they, old are the kids? Uh, they're now um, 14 and 12. So right. they would have been, you know, uh, 12 and 10. Oh, great experience for and them. Yeah. They said it was the best thing. They they want to keep going back. Oh, great. Um, yeah. So you know, that, 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 I think, uh, really did help with clarity for me. Um, we are growing so fast. Um, I'm having to manage m myself and keep evolving and learning because managing 50 people is different than managing five people, which is different than managing one person. Yeah. So I'm having to keep scaling up myself, um, which is, you know, challenging in, in, in itself uh, and, and evolving because when you first start out of business, you, you're used to doing everything yourself. And then at some point you can't do anything yourself because you have to manage everyone and you're managing people so mm -hmm. that's been part of um uh developing myself and, and my team around me um has been a, a key thing going in the last couple of months yeah. so i continue to li listen to tons of podcasts uh i tend to to listen to um well sadie has a lot of interesting podcasts as well she loves it all uh we were going to go over to the event the, in uh, in September, obviously that's been pushed back down. Yeah, to... the Health Optimization Summit. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, hopefully see you in January because that's obviously been. I wrote about that on my blog this week. It's been postponed, hasn't it? It has. That's right. Yeah. We're actually going to be showing there as well because I just figure if anyone's going to get what we're doing, it's it's that lot. Absolutely. Yeah, that's really cool. Well, look, we'll um we'll definitely get together in person when you when you come down in in January. Let's just hope things are a little bit more uh, sane by then. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to know even if things are going to be on in January, but uh, it's not the only thing cancelled. We've had to cancel our wedding, so. <laughs> oh, nightmare. Oh. I know, it's all right. Thankfully, we haven't got too far in organising it, but it, it'll be at some point when, when everything calms down a bit. Well, um, yeah. Well, Scotland's a great venue. Scotland's a great venue for you. Maybe yeah, not. Yeah, well. Yeah, I was I was thinking more just down the road so I could come and stumble, stumble <laughs> home afterwards, but uh, maybe for the honeymoon. Yeah. Um, so what is... um. What is one book that you would recommend and one tip for living with more energy and vitality? Um, it could be any book, it could be a favorite book or a book you read recently. Um, and it could be about health and wellness, or it could just be a bit of fiction or whatever. Uh, the latest one I've just read is Hyper Focus, uh, which is how to work less and achieve more, which is Chris Bailey. That's, okay, uh, is it good? Uh, yeah, 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 it's good. Uh, you, a lot of you know. Um, especially, you know, when you just want to sit down and you just want to concentrate and get a job done yeah, and get rid of the distractions. Uh, so a lot of it just makes it clarity and also prioritizing, um, prioritizing, uh, your things is also important. Um, there was one phrase that I've been using a lot this year and that came out from the 80, 20 book. And that was talking about there's many people have, you know, if you, you, uh, if you've got a runway at an airport and you've got lots of planes flying down. 
you can only ever get one off and one on at a time. So you just got to make sure whichever one you're going to land next is the one that's the most important one. Right. And, yeah. And everyone's got lots of planes flying in the air. So it's just, it's just, yeah, that's really good. And in terms of energy, and I, I just think, don't believe everything that you think. Uh, that's my biggest lesson in the last five years. You know, everything that you worry about 90% doesn't work, doesn't happen. Um, so just learn how to deal and quieten your brain. So obviously meditation plays a big part. Nutrition, as you might have guessed, I think plays a huge part because we, a lot of our bodies run off chemicals and if we're putting the wrong chemicals in, you're just making your life more difficult. So definitely nutrition yeah. would be what I would recommend. Yeah. And especially at the moment, you know, I mean, even this morning, I went down, I know it's, you know, it's very easy to go down a coronavirus rabbit hole. Um, but one only needs a certain amount of information to deal with the threat posed by coronavirus and not anymore because it just it just has an adverse effect on you reading the, the terrible things that people are going through. It doesn't change the amount of empathy you have if you read more or less articles on it, really, does it? So, uh, so no, that's that very, very good advice. Absolutely. Um, well, Mark, look, is, sorry, what were you going to say? I, I was going to say, this is the time to book a holiday because no one else is at the moment. Well, we, we have just done that and we booked <laughs> oh, it on Air Miles so, um, so we can cancel it very easily if we want to. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you're absolutely right about a holiday. I, and um, you said the cafes are open. They are here as well. And I actually went out for a bit of breakfast on Saturday. It was lovely to be out again. It really was. Um, all right. Well, look, Mark, it's really good to talk to you. Where can people find out more about you and Bella and Duke? Um, if go to our website, uh, www.bellarinduke.com, and uh, you can follow us on there. We've got the YouTube, podcasts, Instagram, all the all the normal ways of getting in touch with us as well. Great, great. And one more question. Did you find your heart rate variability changed when you were eating the poor diet as opposed to the good diet? Well, OK, so this is where I found a big change. I, w- I went quite strict on my carbs down to 20 key to 20 grams a day when i increased it to 50 after my first four weeks my heart rate massively improved my sleep massively improved everything like just went through the roof and i also increased i uh, i smashed my personal best on the peloton bike um by i think it was about 25 percent wow just by that little change of it adding so a, a little few bit more up. carbs agree with you quite well yeah yeah, yeah but i had yeah. to i had to do it to clear out my system yeah. get through that fat as fast as I could that's interesting then, yeah that's what I noticed yeah I, I found when I did keto and obviously talked about keto quite a bit on this podcast I I almost lost too much weight I think it's a really good diet for a lot of people but I definitely lost I was a bit too thin I couldn't put yeah. on weight so. well it, it, if you look at the stats my body was straining under it and I don't think necessarily it's good to be in it yeah and this is my opinion what my saying is um I don't think it's you should come in and out of it. I think yeah. it's much more natural. Feast and famine, feast and famine, because that's what it would have been like in the world. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mark, great to talk to you. You're doing you're doing sure. good work in the wild yourself. And uh, we'll we'll speak again soon, all right? Perfect. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you to Mark once again. If you want to get involved with Bella and Duke, you can use the code PCZest50 at Bella and Duke. That's PCZest50. I'm not quite sure why we set up such a complicated code, actually, but you won't forget it. PCZest50. You'll get 50% off your first box. Do a bit of biohacking for your pet as well. Look, thank you for listening to Zestology. I'm, uh, I'm now down by the river near my home lovely warm summer's day feeling fully recharged and re-energized following the holiday and uh, yeah it's nice to be out and about um, I've been doing a lot of reading recently of um, Dr. Volta Lungo's book and he talks about the importance of walking fast for at least one hour a day I have to say I'm not walking fast at the moment I'm ambling with my flip-flops which you might be able to hear but um, it's I, you know walking and kind of moderate exercise does agree with me and it's nice that I've kind of factored in walking about in London while I record these podcast intros because it's it's better than just sitting in front of a microphone in a dark room isn't it quick shout out to our sponsors magnesium breakthrough do get involved um what I'm quite pleased about is that magnesium breakthrough have been sponsoring this podcast now for the last couple of months and I know a lot of people have got involved and I know a lot of people have had massive improvements with their sleep because you've been telling me about it on email you've been getting in touch through the website um 
it really helps with stress as well you know even when you feel like you're getting all of the workouts in practicing meditations doing whatever you can to keep your stress levels low you can still feel like you're a bit stressed and magnesium breakthrough can help with that it's the fourth most abundant mineral in the body but we most of us need more of it so if you want to go to uh, try out the old magnesium breakthrough head to bioptimizers.co.uk and enter the code zestology10 for 10 percent off uh, bioptimizers with a z okay so bioptimizers.co.uk with a z use the code zestology10 and get 10 percent off and anywhere else in the world you can also use that code uh, just head to bioptimizers.com enjoy your magnesium breakthrough let me know how you get on actually because i've been getting a lot of emails from people as i say and it is nice to hear and um if you get involved with the biohacked pet food enjoy that as well thanks for listening to zestology have a zesty week and i'll see you next time